another awful tragedy, a fire that killed at least 38 migrants at a detention center in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, right across the border from El Paso. Video from inside the center, and I want you to see this, shows men in uniforms, they're outside, walking around after the fire started. To the left, you can see the fire. Look at these guys with the uniforms. Look at the people on the right kicking that cell jail door. And what do these officials do? They leave. Those migrants remain locked in their cells, surrounded by flames. Mexico's president has had all kinds of explanations. He now says the migrants started the fire Monday night in protest, thinking they'd be deported. Migrants refute that, and activists are condemning the detention conditions as bodies and survivors were pulled out of the center. This woman frantically screaming for her husband. I see him. I see him, she says. I'm here. I'm here. And she's just outside the ambulance. Protesters have been standing at the gates of the facility calling officials their murderers. Joining us now from outside that detention center in Ciudad Juarez is Noticias Telemundo anchor Julio Vaqueiro. Julio, I thank you for being with us this morning. Now the president of Mexico is now calling for the prosecutor general's office to investigate what happened. What happened, Julio, and what are you seeing there? Well, Jose, you know, there are so many open questions, but the facts are that this is a government facility, that the fire started in a government facility. This is not a refugee, as President López Obrador called it uh, yesterday. This is a detention center operated by the Mexican government. And, uh, and I mean, these people who died were under the custody of Mexican government. So who's the responsible one here? That's a big question here. What happened? Why didn't these guards let the migrants out of, the, of their cells? So what we've been seeing here is a lot of outrage, a lot of anger, a lot of fear, because a lot of them, of these migrants here, believe that it could have been them. Most of them have been in this detention center. They, they get here for a couple of days. Once they are detained, if they find them selling things on the streets or asking for money, then most, a lot of them are detained here in, the, in Ciudad Juarez and brought to this detention center. So they feel it could have been them. That's why they are gathering here outside this um, improvised altar that they've put together just to remember the victims and to demand for justice. And what we've seen also is that a lot of them are spending the nights outside this, uh, this place, this facility. Number one, because they don't have a lot, any money to pay for a, a room uh, to spend the night. But number two, because they don't want to leave this place. They want to put the pressure on the local authorities just to make sure that answers are given to them. And one of them, I just want to introduce you to Mr. David. Uh, he's David Nieto, an immigrant from Venezuela. David, como le va? Eh, como se siente? How are you feeling today? Eh, pues estamos muy incómodos porque anoche dormimos en el piso. Anoche teníamos la cama, no teníamos como una carpa, no teníamos un colchón, nada. So he had to spend the night on the floor with his... ¿Cuántos años tiene? Dos años. Dos años. Two year old and his wife. Y unas amigas de Guatemala and, and y Honduras. From, friends from Guatemala and Honduras. Ustedes estuvieron adentro, usted estuvo dentro de este centro de detención justo antes de que comenzara el incendio. David, he was inside the detention center just hours before the fire started. So I just want to ask you, ¿cómo se siente de saber que, que pudo haber estado adentro? How do you feel about knowing, knowing that the fire started just after you left? ¿Cómo se siente con eso? Pues yo estuve ya allá adentro porque no tenía comida, no tenía trabajo, no tenía leche para el bebé, no tenía estum ni pañales. Y pues me, me, me dirigía a migración, al grupo Beta. So he came here asking for help because he didn't have enough food for his family. Eh, pude hablar con ellos y me dije que le, le pedí ayuda para la cuestión de un refugio o algo, porque eso ahí no es un refugio. Ellos me dijeron que me iban a anotar para mandarme a un refugio, que me viniera con mi familia y me anotara. Entonces yo vine y hablé con mi esposa y entre los dos tomamos la decisión de no quedarnos ahí so en la noche. They, huh. they, the, he was asking for help and they decided not to stay here, Jose, because, uh, I mean, it was just a, fue una corazonada, ¿no? Like a heart, heart felt, you decided not to come. Sí, cuando nosotros nos venimos de ahí, allá había muchas personas presas, ellos le quitan los cordones de, de los zapatos a uno, lo desnudan para ver si uno tiene algún objeto contundente. Yeah. 
eh, le quitan todas sus su, su pertenencias, celular, cartera, cédula, todo. So, so he's saying that when when migrants come into this detention center, they, all of their belongings are taken away. So that's one of the arguments they are they are bringing up. They don't have anything to start a fire inside that detention center because all of their belongings are taken away. Y, y usted se siente And, bendecido de, de que se pudo salvar? Do you feel blessed that he he saved his life? Sí, vengo de una familia cristiana y pude haber sido yo que estuviera ahí con mi familia. Como muchos niños también estaban ahí con sus padres, sus madres, y a nosotros lo, no, no, nos aíslan, a las mujeres a un lado y a los hombres a un lado. So, yeah, he's, he's a Christian, he comes from a Christian family, so he thinks that God uh, saved him from, from this tragedy, Jose. And this is just one of many stories outside this detention center. And, you know, 39 people lost their lives. And, Julio, important to say that these people were taken in there and they weren't doing anything illegal. They, many of them are requesting help. They, they have gone through the paperwork that Mexico requires of them. And then they're just put into these prisons. Julio Vaqueiro, thank you so much for being with us this morning. I very much appreciate it.